Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some more customization to your floor and hopefully add in the other floor types. So I want to zoom back into the tile and this is the tile we applied to the bathroom, the kitchens and some other areas. And I want you to take a look at that pattern for a second. Now I'm going to go over to the original pattern. So this tile, I'm going to right click on it and just open that with paint. So it opens this up. I want you to take a look at that. And you'll notice, hopefully, that this pattern doesn't match that pattern. Main reason is that when Revit tiled it, it tiled it incorrectly. And as a result, our patterns now no longer match. And even though we can leave it like that, and it's probably OK, if you want to change it, we can totally do so. Unfortunately, we can't do that in Revit. So I'm just going to use paint, because most computers have paint. And I'm just going to jump back to this file. And what we pretty much want to do is capture the correct tile size. So Revit has a default 256 by 256 pixel tile size. Right now I'm at 626 by 625. So let's go ahead and resize that. Most paint files or most Photoshops have some kind of resize tool to it. So here is mine. I'm going to go to resize, go to pixels, and then change one of these to 256 pixels. I'll press OK and now the size has been shortened. Okay, so this is looking great. It is in a square format. We just need to essentially get it to fit in a box. So the main design is this over here. So I'm gonna kind of just draw it out so you can see it. Um, this area over here. If I could replicate that over and over again, then I'm gonna get the correct tile for for Revit. So it might have actually not been a bad idea to first copy that out and then resize it. So I'm going to undo it. So I'm back to that 626 by 625. And now oh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zoom in and copy this. Go down. So I, you can use the scale tool here to zoom in and out copy just this segment. Okay, so it's a square. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to cut it out. And then let's just go ahead and delete all this by just making a really tiny box and then making a really big box again. So it deletes it all. And now I'm going to just go ahead and paste that design in there. And then I'm going to just adjust the box to fit just that single individual tile. like that. Okay, so right now I'm looking at about a 429 by 420 box. I might be able to adjust that a little bit further, but not much further. Just, uh, just due to the limitations. So that's about where I'm at. So that's pretty close. Uh, what I could do now is go to the resize, pixels, and I'm just going to turn off maintain aspect ratio. So it might be a little off, but I'm just going to set these both to 256 and press OK. So there's my pattern, and that's the correct tile pattern that I want. So before I add it back into the project, I'm just going to think for a second and make sure that these lines kind of line up. And everything actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and just save this. So File, Save. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't automatically update in Revit. But as long as you're on this 3D view, you know, I'm going to zoom out. You can select the floor by going near the wall and the floor and just click on it. So I selected that floor. I'm going to go to Edit Type, where it says Structure, Edit. And then there's my white tile again. So I'm going to edit my white tile. If this isn't here, remember it's just hiding under these two arrows. And I'm going to go to my Appearance, go to Tile, and I'm going to upload the new tile. And press OK, OK, Apply, OK, and click away. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we got here. And you'll notice that the tile has definitely improved. It's much more consistent now. Just where those few pixels kind of altered, that's where we have a little bit of a leeway. So if I spent a little bit more time with it, I could definitely perfect it and get a much smoother tile. But overall, the pattern consistency is much better now. We can now use the same techniques to apply the carpeted areas as well as the hard tile floors. So let's start with the carpet. I'm going to go back to the level one floor plan. I'm going to go over to the architecture tab 
and then click on floor. Uh, it's just asking me if I want to save my project I haven't saved in a while. So I'll just press yes for that. And then my three bedrooms are the carpeted bedrooms. And I'm just going to go ahead and use that line tool to draw out the carpeted area. And I'm just going to be very consistent with how I how I did the other rooms. So something I do want to point out, you might notice it's lagging a lot. So let me just finish up this room here. So I finished that room. It's lagging a lot just because I have the realistic mode on. And when you're using realistic mode, it takes up a lot of resources, which is typically why you want to work in wireframe mode, because it takes up less resources and it's oftentimes a lot easier to work with. And also, typically, if you set it to coarse, uh, you get a lot more memory back. So it's much more consistent, easier to see the lines, and much easier to work with. So. Okay. And if you're wondering why I didn't go into here, that's because that's the bathroom. So I'm holding it at that doorway. Okay. So the three bedrooms have now been created. I'm going to press escape once. I'm not going to put the tile floor type. I'm just going to go to edit type. And I'm going to duplicate it first. Always remember, you have to duplicate it, or it will replace the floor that's currently existing there. I'm going to call this carpet. Press OK. Uh, half inch thickness is fine. And then I'm going to edit this white tile layer. I'm going to add a new layer, create new material. And I'm going to go to identity, call this gray carpet go over to my appearance and go to images select gray carpet and press apply okay and okay and okay so the gray carpet should be added now i'm just going to make sure the height offset is correct this time so we agreed last time that it should be a half inch to match the thickness of the thickness of the floor. I'm going to press apply and then let's finish this up. Okay. And it seems like there's one little inconsistency. So I'm going to switch it back over to realistic and let's take a look here. So there's the carpet. I'm going to go into my 3d view. Let's see if we could find where that inconsistency occurred. If we can't, it might just be fine. Hmm. Okay, so if there is an inconsistency, I'm not quite seeing it, but you can see right away the carpet, that layer, it's been added and it's been added in nicely. So that's all looking good. Okay, we're going to change this area over to our wood floor, our hardwood floor. So one last time, go to your level one, change this over to wireframe, and then let's go to the architecture tab into floor and then use the line tool to manually draw this floor in. Okay, be very careful that you don't enter any of the rooms that already have a flooring to them. So I'm gonna try my best to hopefully avoid the other floor types, although I think the overlap is happening at these lines where they just where they just touch. So there's not a lot we can do about that, but it won't impact anything with regards to the project. Okay, so everything's been added. I'm gonna press escape twice. And then I'm going to edit type, duplicate my floor. This will just be hardwood. So my hardwood layer, press OK. I'm going to edit the structure, go to the gray carpet, dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to change this to a new material. So click here, create new material, go to identity, change the name of the material to hardwood. 
go over to my appearance and then go to my image and go to the wood floor. Okay, so we got wood floor, it's been applied. We're gonna press OK and just go through this and make sure the height offsets a half inch, which it is. And I'm gonna finish that up. The little error pops up, but like I said, it's just these edges here, so you're not even gonna notice it. Okay, so jump back to my 3D view. And now you could see that I have that hardwood floor and I could zoom in. And you can see the tiles much more clearly now. And you could see why it's very important to pattern the floors correctly. So I could go back and I could spend some time and edit this and try to get my floors to match up more consistently so that these patterns or these tiles flow better together. But unfortunately, that will take a bit of time. And I just want to try and keep this video as short as possible. So if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to adjust those. Uh, but we're going to continue with this for now. Okay, so our floors are all done. And I will see you in the next video where we're going to start discussing crawl spaces and foundations. I'll see you then. Peace.